All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build a library, a dynamic link library that's a DLL file in Visual Studio 2017. We'll be using uh, VB.NET 2017 uh, console app. This is just on how to uh, build one. Uh, libraries are always uh, used, but you can build uh, your own. We're going to start with a console app. We'll call it building a library. Now we have our code screen, and uh, because this video is about learning how to build a library, uh, we're going to do some uh, simple math, nothing too complex, but all the principles uh, still apply. So um, what we want to do for the math one that's not too complex is we're going to do the Pythagorean uh, theorem. So the first thing we need to do is get two inputs uh, from the user. We need to get um, A and B because in the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared and we'll be solving that in a function but using a library uh, to do so. So the first thing we need to do is get some variables. So we're going to do uh, int a as an integer because they're going to enter a whole number int b as integer and that will allow them uh, to give us what we need which is a and b and we'll do the rest of the calculation for them. So we just ask them to enter A, and then we need to store their response into uh, the variable. And then we need to ask them what B is, and we'll store the uh, variable. So enter B, and then we'll store it. So if you're looking at uh, building a library or just start a Visual Studio, this may not be the best uh, thing to start with. It's a little advanced. There's a lot uh, going on. I mean, it's not super complex if you've been programming, but if you've just started, this may be a little advanced, but you're welcome uh, to give it a shot because we're going to walk through uh, how to do it. So now that we have our... Um, Imp or our output, what is A, what is B, and they're going to input it, we can then go ahead and build a library. So we're going to swing over to, to the Solution Explorer right here. And we're going to make sure that we're going to add a new project, not an existing project. So we're going to add a new project. We're going to click on class library. Now, when you click on this, sometimes when you click on new, it'll highlight Visual C uh, for you. And when you're looking at Visual C, you'll notice it's green. We're in VB.net, so make sure uh, what you're looking at, that it's actually uh, blue and it says uh, VB. So we're going to be adding a class library. And because this is a DLL file, we'll call it custom DLL because we're customizing what we're doing. You can call it uh, whatever you want. Uh, custom DLL is uh, what I'm using uh, for this uh, video. So here we have public class, class one, in class. Notice there are uh, no subs. The first thing we want to do is give this a namespace. So we're going to go up here and we're going to type in namespace and then we're going to give it a namespace. And we're going to call this one, uh, we'll call it uh, custom. We'll just call it custom and you'll notice there's a red line here and that's because I need a end namespace and that goes at the end. So then that gets rid of my red line. So you have a namespace which is where all your classes are located. So we're going to call this a math function and uh, you can call it uh, whatever you want. Uh, don't call it math because there's already a pre-existing library called math and it will not return an error but you won't be able to do any math a library functions. Visual Studio will not know uh, which one you're referring to, so don't call it math. Math is already uh, math is already used. For example, if I do math dot, well, I'd have to get, have the thing um, a integer. I'll show you uh, later when we use the square root uh, function. So uh, inside my public class is where all my subs are going to go, or all my functions. Because we're solving for the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to build a function. Now, because this is not inside our module one, we're going to create what's called a public shared function. If you just do a public function, it's not going to work. It needs to be shared. So public shared function, and we'll call it uh, PYT for the Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to transfer two values from our main sub. So we need to uh, dimensionalize those. So we're going to do by val because we're looking to get the value of those uh, variables, not the address. By ref means getting the address of where they're located. By val means getting the actual value. So we'll do a 
as integer. And we also need uh, B we'll do as an integer. Now out here in this space, this is going to say what we're going to return it as. And um, when you do square roots, like say we get the number 50, which will be our test data, that doesn't come out to a nice whole round number. So we don't want the uh, program to round for us. So we're going to do as decimal. So now that we have that, we're uh, ready to start building our uh, function. So we're going to do dim um, c return as decimal because we need to return uh, the variable. And then um, we have uh, a that's been transferred, b that's been transferred based on what the user has inputted. So we can go ahead and work with that a little bit too. And we'll do uh, a uh, times a. That will give us a squared. You could also do um, a caret uh, to the second. And the caret symbol is shift 6 if you want. And then we want uh, b squared. All right, so our C return will be A squared plus uh, B squared, and then we need to take the square root of it. Now, there is a specific reason I'm going to leave that out uh, at the moment, and that's to prove a point or prove uh, that you need to do something when you update your DLL file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do uh, return, C return, and then that will give us uh, what we need. Now, once you have this typed, and obviously this is not going to give us the right answer because I haven't taken the square root yet, but there's a reason for that, and I'll show you in a few minutes uh, why I left that out. We will uh, fix it. Once you have your uh, DLL file or your library uh, the way you want it, the next thing you need to do is you need to build it. So right over here, we're looking at our custom DLL file, and when you right-click, you'll notice uh, some options. You'll notice Build, Rebuild, and Clean. Uh, when you're building something for the first time, you want to build. There's no need to rebuild. Nothing's been done, so you can do build. Uh, rebuild is when you make changes to your DLL file, you can rebuild it. It's a little faster, but it's also a little finicky. Sometimes it doesn't uh, add in all the new stuff you've added. Uh, what I like to do is when I make changes to a DLL file, I like to clean it. And what that means is it's not going to delete your code, but it's going to delete everything that's been built and start from scratch. So I like to do a clean and then a uh, build. And you can do this as many times as you want. There's no uh, set uh, number you need to do. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit build. And we're going to look down here in the output window. It has started the build. And right here we can see that the build has succeeded. So that's good. Now that the build has succeeded, we need to add a reference. So I'm going to go over here to my uh, building a library. Don't want the DLL referencing itself. And you're going to look in the project. So right here at project, you're going to click on add reference. Now you may see something that looks uh, like this. What you're going to be looking for is browse. So go over here, click browse. And that is one that uh, one of my students uh, made. I was helping uh, him. So we're going to look uh, for ours. And um, ours was building a library. So here's my folder. Click on that. Here's my custom DLL. That is where the DLL is stored. And click on that. And this is when we created a new project. That's how the new folder uh, got in there. So we're going to do uh, look in the bin folder, the debug folder, and here it is, the custom DLL. If you do not build the file, the DLL file, this will not be here. You have to build it first. So if, you, if you're looking for it and you don't see it, then you need uh, to build it. So we'll go ahead, click Add. I'll hit OK. Now it's been referenced into uh, my sub. So now I need to import it. And this is where the namespace comes in. So right outside my module, I need to import the DLL file. It's dynamically linked, meaning I have to link it. It's not uh, built in as a pre-existing library. It's my own custom, so we need to import it. For that, all we do is an import uh, statement, and we're looking for our DLL file name, then dot namespace. So our DLL file is custom DLL. So if you look here, you'll see custom. That is our namespace right over here. So uh, when you import the file, it's the DLL name 
followed by the name space name and my namespace was custom. Now, if you look, you'll see it says the import statement is unnecessary. Well, the reason it's unnecessary right now is because we haven't done anything with it. You'll see this change to white uh, moment, momentarily. So uh, we need another variable and we'll do, um, you know, uh, answer. And we'll do that as a decimal because our answer for the Pythagorean theorem may be as a um, decimal. We can call our function. So our answer is going to equal and we're going to call our function. Now we've imported the custom DLL in the, in the uh, custom namespace. Now that we've done that, we can uh, call what class we want to reference. Well, in this example, we only have one class. You can, but you can create as many classes as you want. Um, so we're going to do math function dot... And there is our uh, our function right here. Now, if I was to take this out, and I'll just uh, <coughs> excuse me. I will. Um, you'll see that there's an error. It says math functions not declared. If you haven't imported your file, you're not going to be able to use it. And you'll see there's a red line here, and that's because it's expecting uh, two values, and that's going to be int a, int b, and then that will uh, transfer over into the function. And then it will return it and we'll write out the answer to make sure it's working. So we're going to save. We're going to go ahead and run it and make sure that it's uh, working. So we're going to do 5 and 5. And 5 squared is 25. Uh, if we use 5 for B, 5 squared is also 25 again. 25 plus 25 is 50. If our function's working, uh, that's what it should output. And it's outputting 50, so it's working. So, but that's not how the Pythagorean theorem works. So let me go back over here. And what we're going to do is we need to get the square root. So we already have a value uh, inside C return. We can overwrite that value. And what we're going to do is we're going to do math dot. And if you used math as a uh, class name or namespace name, you're not going to get these lists of things that it can do. And that's why earlier I said uh, don't do that. So sqrt will give us, that's the uh, square root function uh, built in, and we're going to get that of c return. I'm going to go ahead and save it, and it says return, c return. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see that it's not going to work, even though we typed it in, and we'll talk about why. So we should get 7.0 something uh, that should be somewhere around what the square root of 50 is, um, somewhere around uh, 7.0 uh, something, and we see it's coming out to 50. Well, when you're looking at your code, you're going to be saying, well, that shouldn't happen because I took the square root of C return and I'm returning C return. Why isn't that working? When you, after you build the DLL file, any changes that you make, it has to be rebuilt again. It's not going to include those new changes. So over here, you can try rebuild. Um, some programmers say it's very finicky, so I like to stay away from it, especially if my library is getting pretty large. I just go ahead and do a clean. It's going to get rid of everything that it's built before. Here I see the clean has succeeded. And then I'm going to click on build. The build has succeeded. When I run the program now, it should work. So let's give that a try. And there it is, 7.07 .07 with a bunch of numbers behind it. So now it is working. It's very important when you're working with a DLL file that you build the DLL file and don't forget you must also add a reference. You only need to add the reference once. Any changes you make after you have referenced the DLL file, you just need to clean and rebuild. That's all it is to making a library and if you're finding yourself programming and you're doing a lot of repetitive things, you can actually store those functions in a library and call them whenever you want. It'll, it'll be uh, much more efficient it's already been, you would have already tested it for bugs. Um, so it works out uh, really, really well. If you guys have any questions, please post a comment below and uh, we'll see you guys next time.